Do you take pictures with your phone and would you like your photos to really stand out from the crowd? If so, you're in the right place because in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite photo editing app and I'm gonna walk you through some of the easiest to use features that means you can take images that really pop straight away. My name's Steve, this is Behind The Tripod and let's get stuck into today's video. So, which app do I think all phone photographers of any level should have on their phone? The app I'm gonna talk about today is, drum roll please, Snapseed. For those that don't know what Snapseed is, let me quickly explain. Snapseed is owned by Google and so it's completely free on Android and iPhone and there's no annoying adverts, no extra purchase that you need. But it's not just the fact that it's free. I love Snapseed because it's done something that so many editing apps seem to really struggle with. It's both powerful on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's really easy to use because right off the bat, with no photo editing experience at all, you can learn a few of the basic tools and create some truly amazing photos that you can share on social media, show your friends, or just keep to yourself on your phone. It's completely up to you. But Snapseed will allow you to get the most out of your powerful phone camera. And with just a few tips and tricks that I'll show you in just a moment, you'll be totally blown away by your own images. So, without further delay, let's get stuck into Snapseed. Right, so I've got my phone and the first thing to be aware of with Snapseed is that there are two main ways of bringing your photos into the app. The first way is to open Snapseed, press the plus and it'll pull up a gallery and you can look through your images. But the way I prefer to do it is to just open up my photos, scroll through and if I've got some albums or libraries then I can open up the libraries. I've opened one up here just for this video because I find it's just a nice way of seeing your images. It's a much clearer interface and you can see the ones that you like click on it, hit share, and then hit Snapseed, and that will open it up into Snapseed for you. Okay, so this image here, if you look at this screen here, there's a few different bits to, to be aware of. You've got at the bottom, you've got styles, and this is a bit like Instagram, so if, you, if you're used to Instagram or similar apps, they have presets that do in a preset style on there. We're gonna completely ignore the styles because we want to have control over our edit, so we're gonna hit tools. And this brings up a whole screen of tools. Now with these tools, there's some that I use all the time, some that I use often, some I hardly ever use, and some I never touch. So what I'm gonna go through today is a workflow for a very basic edit and just the tools I think you need to know straight away. So the first thing I do in my edit or my workflow is the crop. So the crop is the top right hand corner. Now before we go any further, can I just say that Snapseed is non-destructive and what that means is that it won't do anything to your original picture, it kind of works on the copy. So you can play around with Snapseed, do whatever you like, but your original picture will remain as it is. So don't be scared of experimenting with Snapseed. So we'll go to Crop and it brings up a lovely screen. It's got your rule of thirds on there. It's also got a selection of different crops that you can choose or different ratios. What I'm gonna go for here is a square crop because I think this will work lovely in a square. And if you're just looking at those rule of thirds, actually I can get that really pretty bang on the rule of thirds. If you pull them to the corners, it will just shrink it or you can expand your image. I'm gonna shrink it very slightly because I'm gonna pull it across and just really work those rule of thirds. So at least I've got the horizon edge of the lake on the top third, I've got that rock and where the intersections are, this works beautifully. So I'm gonna hit the tick and that means that's done. Now at any point on Snapseed, I can go up to the top right corner, there's two squares and this is about your layers. You can hit on there and you can undo the previous layer, you can revert it back to what it was, or you can view your edits. And if you, through viewing your edits, it means you can go back and change things within your edits as you go without having to delete everything and start again. So we're gonna hit the back arrow just to go back. Tools again, the next part of my workflow is the tune image. And this brings up a whole load of different options. So with Snapseed, you go up and down, that brings up the options. So I'm gonna slide my thumb up and down left and right changes it. So if we chose brightness, for instance, if I go right, it's gonna increase the brightness. If I go left, it's gonna decrease it. I'm not gonna to touch the brightness just yet. I'm gonna go up until I find ambience. And I'm gonna play with this one. Now, if you go really heavy on this one, it pulls out all the details, really affects the mid-tones, and you almost get that HDR sort of look. If you go low, it can get quite dark and quite dull. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher here because I want to pull out some of the detail in the stones, but I don't wanna to go too high. It's all about subtlety editing. You don't want to over, overwork it. You want it to look quite natural if you can. 
I'm just going to pull up the highlights because I want this image to be a little bit more contrasty. So I'm going to go to about there, 24, and drop the shadows just a touch. And again, it doesn't need a lot for the shadows, minus six. Now my camera tends to take pictures that are quite cool. So I'm going to warm it up slightly. So I'm going to increase the warmth just a touch. Plus 10 should be enough, maybe a little bit more. Not too much, just a little bit because it's always quite cool. Now I can go up higher. I'm not going to touch the contrast, but I am going to go to the brightness and just brighten up the image just a little bit. I think it's just slightly underexposed. Good. Okay, reasonably happy with that. Again, we can come back to the main screen. If you press and hold on the image, it will show you what the original looked like, and then you can let go and see what the new version looks like. So it just gives you a bit of a, a bit of a guide. So tools, the next one I normally go to is details. And details is interesting because we've got structure and this increases and decreases structure. Again, if we go all the way up, you get a real HDR look, it's very a bit hard on the eyes. If you go all the way down, it really smooths everything out and you lose some of the structure. So going down is quite nice if you want to lose detail. So nice on people's faces if you want to get rid of wrinkles or to smooth out the skin, you want to go down. But for this one, again, I like some of the details. I want to pull it up just a little bit, but again, not too far. Plus 12, that looks about right. And then you can sharpen if you need to. I tend, tend to under, overdo the sharpening. I find that it, it introduces artifacts, so we want to keep it fairly low. So I'm going to go just to sort of plus 14 there, not too high. Okay, again, just have a look at the original, have a look at the new one, it's starting to really pop now. What I think this image needs is a little bit of vignette. I like a vignette. So what we can do with the vignette is we can control the outer darkness, we can make it lighter. We can also scroll up and control the inner the brightness and make that lighter or darker. So I'm going to drop down, just give it a little bit of a vignette, not too much, it just draws the eye into the middle and increase the inner brightness just by a touch. Lovely, I'm gonna hit the tick there. I really like that. Again, we can look at the, the difference between the original, it's quite flat, and then look at the new version, it really does pop. So I'm gonna click done, and that will save that as an image. Okay, I'm gonna import one more. I want to look at this image here of me. Okay, share, and we'll bring that into Snapseed. Okay, so tools, let's start again. I'm gonna start with the crop. I'm gonna go for a free crop this time, because I don't wanna crop it too much. But I want to just play on those all of Thursday. Let's that, get that right on my eye there. Lovely. Don't want too much sky in this one. I think that looks much better. Okay, lovely. Tools. Tune image. So for this one, again, I'm going to start with just the ambience. Now, again, a good tip with the ambience, if you're going up or down, some of them can start to pull the person out from the background. And that's what the ambience by adding here is doing. So I'm going to drop, take it up just a touch. Again, not too far. Just to bring myself out from the background. Highlights I'm going to increase, I'm going to pick that up quite a bit there, and I'm just going to drop the shadows a touch, but if I raise the shadows you see it'll just lighten the whole image, but I'm just going to drop it a touch there, just give it some contrast. Again my camera does take the images to being quite cool, so I'm just going to increase the warmth just a little bit there, and I think that looks much better. And then I'm just going to increase the brightness slightly because I think I'm probably a little bit underexposed there. Lovely. Saturation, I'm going to drop it just a touch because I think there's probably a little bit too much in there because I'm going to hit the tick. I'm going to move over now to details and as I add some structure or remove structure, that will change. I'm going to drop the structure slightly, get rid of some of the old wrinkles and then press tick on there. That's good. The other thing you can do, which I haven't talked about yet, is the healing. So if we hit the healing, I don't need to do any healing in this one, but I'm going to show you what it does anyway so you're aware. So let's just pinch and make it bigger, like we do with most things in smartphones, that'll just increase the size. If I had something in my image that I didn't want, like a bird or a blemish on the skin or something that I didn't want, we can use our healing brush and all we do is we color it in. Okay, so you can see this bit of tree or bush, I'm just gonna hit that and we'll get rid of that. And it just samples parts of it. We use a box to move around. So let's go onto the path, let's get rid of some of these on the path. So we'll do a line. See, it does quite a good job. You might need to play around with it a little bit just to remove any extra bits of distraction, we can get rid of maybe that piece in the water. And you see it does an, it does an all right job of getting rid of distractions. So again, we'll just pinch them in closer, make it slightly bigger. We'll see what the picture like before. Let's see what it's like now. It's already starting to look a lot better. Tools, again, I do like a vignette, I've got to admit, I do like them. It does, I do find they draw your eye in, it makes it look quite natural as a picture. But it, again, I don't like to overdo a vignette. But what I can do here with my vignette is get the dot and drag it over onto my face. And I can make the circle for the vignette bigger or smaller. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that over my face. 
and then I'm gonna use the outside just to darken it, obviously not quite that much, but just to add a little bit of darkness on the outside, and then the inside I'm gonna lighten slightly. Don't wanna overdo it, it's about being subtle. That's probably about right. And again, we can look at the original and look at the new version there, and I think the new version looks a lot better. Um, so I'm gonna leave that there. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed that video and I hope it's given you some ideas of how you can use Snapseed to really enhance your phone photography. And if you have enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing another video shortly going into a little bit more detail about Snapseed and how you can use it to be a bit more artistic and a bit more creative with your phone photography. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about phone photography and how to take better pictures, then check this video out here.